You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Here, we'll help you unlock the secrets of entrepreneurship and self-development. This is your host, Alex Quinn. I'm a full-stack marketing executive and global keynote speaker. Get ready to get real-world knowledge from top-level entrepreneurs and world-class business leaders. Hey guys, Randy Zuckerberg here. Hi everyone, it's Neil Patel and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. This is the motherfucking CEO, Andy Frisella. You're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle with Alex Quinn. Become an authority and thought leader in your niche. Join a free private community of entrepreneurs and professionals looking to grow their business and optimize their performance. Get easy to learn resources and materials that empower your personal and financial success. Easily accessible for free on desktop and mobile app. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to access now. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Enjoy the rest of the episode. What's going on, guys? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On today's episode, we have Pierre Hachar, one of the top billboard music lawyers and operator of the Hachar Law Firm, focusing on entertainment, immigration, and litigation legal services, which are essential in the representation of its clients in the entertainment industry. The group has worked with artists and brands like Anita, Gente de Sona, Justin Quiles, Carol G, Live Nation, and many more. What's going on, man? What's up, Alex Quinn? How you doing, my bro? Man, thank you so much for jumping on. Guys, to give you some context, I met Pierre about a year and a half back. He has a great team. He has great energy. I've been following him ever since, and I love the content that he's putting out. Pierre works in the entertainment industry, and he's making some massive moves. And I thought it would be fantastic for you guys to hear a little bit about what he has going on and how you could apply some of the stuff he has going on to build your career, whether you're interested in branding, whether you're interested in entertainment, or whether you're interested in actually getting into music, which is mostly what he's concentrating on right now. So Pierre, why don't you give us a little bit of background? Alex, first of all, thanks for having me on your show. Uh, it's definitely an honor to be here with you. And uh, so I am a entertainment lawyer. I represent some of Latin music's biggest stars. Um, they're multi Grammy award winning uh, artists, producers, songwriters, multi platinum. And I also represent the guys that are on the come up and they got to do a little more hustling. And I kind of guide them through that whole process so that they can be as successful as they can. I started off as a musician, so I'm a creative guy. Um, and, uh, studied, uh, music at Berkeley and then at university of Miami. And then I was like, all right, I'm great at music. I love business. How can I put the, you know, the two together? And I was like, you know what, the best way I can help the people that are around me in the music scene is to become a lawyer and represent these guys. And that's what I did. I went to law school, became a lawyer. I've been a lawyer for 10 years now and, uh, got my first client, opened up shop, uh, and started the hustle of an entertainment lawyer with one client and have built an amazing team representing some of the top guys in the industry. Now, the people that are listening right now aren't seeing, but you're sitting in front of a ton of plaques. I see Billboard. I see Alex Sensation. I see Osuna. We're talking about global superstars, man. You're doing your thing. These guys are some of the biggest artists on the Latin game, but you know, the, the, the Latin market and the general market has merged in the last couple of years. It's just international music that we're representing at this point. So it's a beautiful time in, in Latin music. Um, you know, with, uh, you know, I had the privilege of, uh, representing a group, uh, uh, called Gente de Sona. They had one of the biggest songs in the world on the Latin side with Enrique Iglesias called Bailando. And that, yeah. that, that that record just went international and that was like about five years ago and i said you know latin music is is no longer is no longer latin it's just music and uh you know then despacito came out and all these all these records that have that latin influence so it's a great great time for the latin music and for our office representing a lot of these guys in all the deals and negotiating their uh partnerships and and publishing deals and and getting getting them in in bigger rooms and, and with bigger numbers bigger exposure it's look man it's absolutely incredible i talk about this all the time like think about back in the day like let's say 80s 90s people in south america singing along to michael jackson 
most of them had no idea what the fuck he was saying, but it sounded amazing. Now that's where right. reggaeton is. Like the other day, I was watching a video of J Balvin in Morocco, and these people are going fucking nuts singing in Spanish in Morocco. Yeah. Now they're singing like, in Spanish. It's it's unreal. <laughs> it's unreal. But you know that's the beautiful a- thing about music, man. And whoever's whoever's listening to uh to, to this to this uh program today, you know, music is they call it la lingua franca. It's just it's the it's the worldwide understood language. You just music speaks for itself. You know, I see client my, some of my clients are in Asia and in Japan and in Australia. You know, it doesn't matter the language, man. Music connects to people. That's what's beautiful about it. You know, it's uh it's. It's definitely a different dimension of communication. Yeah, man. And it's also like keeping an eye out, right? Because for a while, I understood the influence that hip hop, for example, had on reggaeton. And I was like, man, all these reggaeton guys have their own flavor, right? But they do have a very strong influence from from the American market. I wonder when that mix is going to happen. I think one of the catalysts for that, and there's many, but one of the catalysts for that was when Drake and Romeo Santos did their song. Then um, Romeo Santos and Usher. And, you know, there's, there's probably many people before, many people after, but you start seeing these mixes of people coming together and people actually liking it. Like you have people out here listening to Spanish music, Bad Bunny, I know all these guys, they, they don't know what they're saying, but it just sounds dope. It sounds good. It has flavor. It has energy behind it. And people just want to be around that now. It's totally legit, man. And you know what? It's, it's, it, it's it's we go back to you know just music just if it connects it doesn't matter what i mean i've caught myself listening to to songs in different languages i'm like damn this shit is hot and i'm like yep. okay it's in french i don't know french i mean my name's pierre i'm not french and i'm like this is you know you connect and then that connection is is what what makes a superstar to tell you the truth it doesn't matter what language it's in but yeah look look those latinos with you know the, the rise of the balvins and the bad bunnies and and the Osunas, you know, it's, it's now it's a more open conversation that a lot of the general market, uh, when I say general market on, you know, on the English side, uh, is they're more receptive to it before they weren't because it's, it is two different cultures. It's two different languages, but right now it's so beautifully open that, um, there's no barrier. You know, now the English, the English, uh, speaking, uh, and the general market artists like Drake and like, like Justin Bieber and all these guys, they're coming over to our side of the turf, you know, before yeah. it was weird. We're, we're trying to get them on records. Now it's like, they're, they're looking out for us to get on records. So, uh, and we're, we're, we're excited about it. And, and that's the game that has definitely, you know, uh, changed in the last couple of years because of it. It's, it's so amazing how something so great could be born in an island and go global. The Puerto Ricans, man, have been blessing us with amazing music for way too long. And now they've allowed it to become something global. They've been totally killing it. And I've been watching it. I'm telling you, bro, since I was 12, 13 years old, I've been deep into music. Once I got older, once I got into the industry and I started building connections, I really started to understand, but I always struggled with how I could contribute towards the business. Um, And what you said when we started the conversation really resonated with me because you found yourself being a musician. You found yourself going to Berkeley. You find yourself being business. You maybe necessarily didn't want to go or decided to go on the route of being an artist, but you said, hey, there's a business to this shit. Like I could actually be very, very good in this business. And that happens to me from the perspective of I'm not a singer. I'm not a rapper. I know everyone. I have connections. I know the guys at CMN. I know the guys at Rich Music. I know the guys at Rock Nation. I know the guys at iHeart. I'm extremely well connected, but I'm not an artist. How can you bring something to the table? And I think that's a very good topic to touch on specifically during this episode, because when you get into an industry, you might think you want to do something, but that might not necessarily be what you end up doing. And it doesn't mean that you should give up on it. You went to law school just to be able to do what you're doing now. You know, it's funny. I was doing a video for my Instagram and my YouTube uh, a couple of days ago, and I talk about that because in the music industry is so broad, right? So everybody starts off, and I was all—I've been there. You know, I've been confused within the music uh, industry uh, many years ago, but I knew I wanted to be in the space. And when you when you're there, the most important thing you need to realize is it's okay if you don't become what you think you're going to become, but you gotta understand where where you could be of most value and where you can be the most fulfilled. 
And for me, it was law. And I said, you know, and I found that, but you know, there's so many guys, oh, I want to be an artist or I want to be a rapper. I want to be, but they become amazing songwriters and they stick to that. And all of a sudden, some yeah. guy is like, oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm the best. I'm the best music producer, but they become the best live engineer in the game. And they start touring all, all, all these different countries. So, you know, it, it all, it all adds up at the end. The most important thing is if you want to be in the space is identify your purpose. I think at the end of the day, when you identify that purpose, you can channel your passion for music in a, in a way that's going to be fulfilling, number one, and helpful, number two. Everybody, everybody in the music career is helpful in one way or the other. The engineer helps the artist um, sound better. The producer helps the record label and the songwriter and the, and the artist sell more records. The record label helps fund and promote the artist. The artist helps the consumer enjoy music. Everyone has a purpose, okay? And everyone needs to fill uh, a, a, a void for themselves and for the public. And when you find that, that's when you start succeeding. Yeah, people people tend to listen to music, and a lot of the times tend to forget that it's a big ass group effort, man. Like putting out some music. There's a shit ton of people behind one song. Shit, a shit ton, ton of people. A shit ton. And the more success the song has the more people were behind it it just takes up it takes a village man yeah so look man you've been you've been in the industry for a while it must have been very rewarding for yourself and your team for you to get that billboard recognition that's pretty cool man that was that was that was very uh that was an amazing uh recognition um you know for me it's always been a dream to be on since i became a lawyer it was a dream to be on the top lawyers of billboards list and, um, you know, I, 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 I got on that list because my purpose of helping clients and having that fulfill me within the business is what brought me there. That nothing else helped. It was just, you do right by people and you take an ethical approach and you just go out there and hustle your game so that you can fulfill that purpose and you get recognized. So for me, it was, it was, it was, it was an amazing recognition definitely to be amongst the top music lawyers in america yeah man it just puts you it just puts you in a in a social hierarchy and it puts you at the top of the eco chamber it allows you to build on more connections it allows you to be more recognized and honestly i see it too much because for example my family has worked in the entertainment industry for the past like 15 years that's what we like to do we do music and entertainment and marketing right for the most part um but what people tend to shy away from a lot of the time is having great legal representation when it comes to the industry. And people don't realize that that could be the difference between you having a multi-million dollar contract and getting stuck with nothing. And people so many times want to cheap out on the most important part. Like some of today's biggest stars are actually being managed directly by their law firm, right? Like look at the way Maluma operates right now. His lawyer is on top of his shit all the time, moving absolutely everything. And the people that are opening up their mind now to work with a lawyer or work with a firm that handles law, but also handles growth, expansion, and strategic partnerships is the key to the growth right now of an artist, of an entertainer in today's world. Hey. I just wanted to jump in real quick to tell you about how to train yourself in organization, balancing your priorities, developing successful habits, and most importantly, having a better mindset. I'm giving free access to resources and materials on business management and self-development. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to get access. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Okay, let's get back into the episode. Let me tell you, I've, I've never met a successful artist that doesn't have a lawyer on, as his right hand and his left hand. Whether that's in a legal capacity, a management capacity, a just a, a corporate capacity, I've never met a successful artist that didn't have a personal relationship with their lawyer on a day-to-day -day basis for growth in the entertainment business. And I don't know how you could do it without, 
I mean, I, we were talking about a lot of people having uh, being behind a record. I mean, you don't know the paperwork that goes behind. A, forget negotiating your general deals, your recording contracts, your publishing contracts, your endorsement contracts, your sponsorship. Forget, forget all of that paperwork. Well, each song has paper. You got to put out producer agreements. You got to put out splits, the splits for the composers. You got to put out work for hires. You got. I mean, it's just and. It, you know, you're, you're putting, you're cranking out records more than ever. How can you not have that and cross your T's and dot your I's on the legal side? You're destined to fail, destined to fail. Uh, and, and that goes for producers too. It goes for songwriters. It goes for influencers. It goes for content creators. I mean, it's just necessary to have great legal representation and, and have someone like we, we fight for our clients tooth and nail. And our, we we love to see our clients succeed. The only way for that to happen is for us to fight and fight hard for our clients and understand what they have going on and really really believe in the in the vision. That's that's the most important part too. Because for me as a marketing agency, you know, there's a lot of potential clients out there that want to work with me or have heard about my track record or want me to build something out for them. But everything comes down to education, communication, and synergy. The person you're working with has to be willing to be coached, has to be willing to learn, has to be willing to understand that you're trying to do the best for them in order for there to be good communication. Now, as far as the representation, you guys do represent artists, but you just mentioned engineers, you just mentioned producers you just mentioned composers you just mentioned all this type of stuff are you do you guys represent people at all of these capacities or are you guys just limiting to a certain market right now let, let me explain to you how i structured my my firm so uh we're an entertainment law firm and then we have divisions um it's it's a group of 10 of us at the firm and uh we call ourselves the group the hachar entertainment group and um basically we um we have within our firm an immigration division, which helps all our clients do all their touring visas and all of their uh, uh, residencies when they're out of the country and they want to start living here. And we represent probably the A-list Latin artists on our immigration team. Like we well, remember every time you, you want to come from Colombia and do a tour in the United States, you got to bring the engineers, the managers, the road managers, the dancers, the, you know, the videographers and all of these guys need work visas. And so we have a team that handles that. And we have the litigation side where we, we do all the co- breach of contract um, uh, representation. And we go out there and try to get clients either out of their deals that are, 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 are bad for them because there's, there's been issues with the other side or someone's infringing on their rights and we got to sue them. Uh, so we have the litigation division. We have the transactional division, which closes all the publishing deals and all the, rec- the, the, the record deals and whatnot. Then within all of that, we have an estate planning to help guide some of the top clients that we have in, you know, what happens if a Kobe Bryant situation happens to them? Right. Um, well, you know, here's how your kids would get the royalties and, and this is how you would distribute it to your spouse. So we have an estate planning attorney within the team. And then we also have family issues that we deal with for our entertainment. Clients. So I built an all encompassing legal practice for uh, entertainers that helps them and guides them through all of these um, sort of issues that commonly come out for clients in the entertainment business for them to succeed. We want to see them. We want to see them be successful while they're here, and we want them to leave a legacy after they're here. So we, 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 we cover all ground within our representation. And it's for everybody. It's, a, it's for the artists. It's for music producers. We represent um, uh, uh, video directors. We represent um, TV personnel. Uh, it's all encompassing on the entertainment side. You know, you guys... I think you guys, like one of the things I do on my agency is, you know, we do work on retainer deals and we do have our clients that stay on with us, but we also have a a really, really, really nice amount of people that know that we have the industry knowledge and want to get consulting. I think it's absolutely amazing the amount of knowledge that you guys have and the power of consulting that could be available towards people that actually want to invest in themselves, right? You don't necessarily have to be an A-list, B-list, C-list artist to be able to want to purchase access to top level knowledge that's going to help you expand. Like, for example, I'll tell you, I've spent 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, a thousand dollars an hour on consultants for my business, for me to be able to be at a different level and understand. So I don't pay that dummy tax. You have to, man, you have to, you have to, I mean, you, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hire the right people to take you to the next level at every level. I mean, that's, 
that's that's key. That's key. I mean, a lot of people don't go to lawyers because they're either intimidated, they're scared, or they don't have the money. Um, you know, um, the clients that we get, um, sometimes we feel that. But, you know, when you find a connection with a client or with a lawyer on the other, when you're on the other side, you, you find a way to make it work. I mean, I, if there's uh, some encouragement I can give some of your listeners is don't be intimidated by a lawyer. If you're intimidated by your lawyer, get another one. You know, there's so many, there's so many great lawyers out there. I mean, in the entertainment space, it's, it's not that many, but you know, um, for me, the most important thing is obviously to understand what my client's goals are, but at the end of the day, you know, we're giving them value to help them, you know, it's not the other way around. So, so for me, it's important that I educate my clients and, you know, I put out a, and I started more now with this whole quarantine. I, 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 I'm, I'm. My my time is 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 limited, but now with this quarantine thing, and I've got all my all my guys at home, I'm putting up more content because a lot of people that can't afford it or or are in other countries, I want them to learn about this business. I want everybody to learn as much as they can about this business because it makes the business better. It makes the business more competitive, you know. And in, in and so I put out content on my on my Instagram or or on my YouTube, and I'm 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 trying to you know educate as many people as I can that. Probably would never pass by my office. You know what? That's fine. Because in the Latin community, they take advantage of the ignorance of the artist. And that's what I want to avoid with the type of information I'm putting out there so that people can learn and they don't get taken advantage of by not knowing. The, you know, the Latinos, uh, Alex, they're there. They're, <laughs> you know, they, they, they try to get you <laughs> drunk before you sign so you don't even read the contract. Like, that's not, that's just not cool, right? So Yeah, man. Uh, uh, if I can do my uh, do my part in society and within the entertainment business to to, to help some guys out in uh, in feeding them some information outside of my client base, then I'm going to do it. You know, I think it's very important to put out great content that educates and teaches people because not everybody could afford you at the moment. But man, life takes some crazy ass turns, Pierre. And that person who was dead broke last month could be a billionaire, millionaire next month. And you might be that person they remember watching that video. You cannot underestimate anybody in this business. Ever. I've seen people, I've seen people sweeping floors in a recording studio that two years later are the biggest fucking producers in the game. You cannot underestimate anybody in this business and you know yeah people people also you know listen man people pay me for the information and the knowledge i have and that's that's good but that's that's not where the real value is of any lawyer the real value is the experience okay and how you use that information yep action and application so for me giving out giving out information and legal information uh, with my with my content it's just information, you know, it's, it's valuable information that not a lot of people communicate and that's great, but that's not going to help you navigate a huge publishing deal where you're, you're shopping a 15, $20 million deal. That's not going to help you navigate the intricacies of, uh, of disclosure requirements for sponsorships and endorsements. That's not going to navigate a, a, a lawsuit where you need, you know, there's where you say, that's where the experience comes in. That's where applying that knowledge that you have comes in. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the real value of why people pay me, um, you know, and, uh, and, and I can apply it to the smallest of problems and I can apply it to the biggest of problems. I love it, man. Now with COVID with coronavirus, right. Um, shit. It's crazy. Shit's different now. Are you seeing uh, an increase in strategic partnerships for artists that are working from home? What kind of changes are you seeing in the industry? Because obviously we can't congregate at big ass events anymore. So obviously things have to shift. Money has to be made. I think there's more opportunity than ever if you're willing to work for it. Because a lot of my clients that are on their phone or on their camera and recording content and reinventing themselves in in 12 to 18 months are going to be super successful. I'm already yeah. starting to see the sponsorship uh, agreements coming in for some of these clients, you know, okay, we can't go to a concert. They're doing virtual concerts. Okay. You can't. Okay. Well, they're opening up new, new, new accounts. I mean, they could be masters at one social media, but they've abandoned the Twitter or, or TikTok, for example. And now I see them on, they're hustling the hustle of social media now more than ever creating valuable entertainment content. And those guys, I see huge opportunity for them. 
the guys that are waiting for this shit to die down, they're going to die down with it. Yeah, that's what I said when this whole shit started. You cannot act like, all right, I'm just going to wait for this shit to go back to normal immediately. Because what if it doesn't? Now you lost two, three months. You could have had the opportunity to put put out a bunch of content. And not only that, now where you're home and you have your most like human aspect, like people could relate to you. That's when people could get actually closer to you as an artist, as a public figure, because they could relate to you more. You are a human just like them. You guys are all in the same situation, but you're scaling and monetizing. Like for example, Facebook, so many artists neglect Facebook, but you could be easily getting five, six figure checks from Facebook on a monthly basis, just from being able to rack up enough engagement and views on the content that you're putting out. Like you just mentioned, a lot of people are overlooking TikTok. Look what just look what Drake just did with the Tussie slide. Okay, that song was made for TikTok, bro. That song was made for TikTok, and that's why that shit is number one on the hot on the hot one hundred. One hundred percent. And now it's socially listen. It's 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 social media driven promotion for artists. I mean, before it was your traditional radio and TV outlets. Now it's the other way around. Like radio won't touch your record unless it's popping on on Spotify and on and all these social media platforms like TikTok and, and Instagram. So, so you'd be, you'd be stupid not to take full advantage of that, you know? And, and, and that's, and honestly, the competition gets fierce because there's so, you can go directly to your consumer now more than ever. You don't need middlemen. You don't need anything. You can get your phone, turn it on, go online and start connecting with people. And let me tell you, I've seen artists go from an, a, a, 40,000 followers to 4 million followers, 12 months, 14 months. Yeah. People, when you figure your shit out and it connects, that's it, man. You're, you're on that wave. Now you got to learn how to surf, you know, you got to learn how to surf. So, so there's more opportunity than ever. And like I said, those who take advantage of it during this, during this time are the ones that are going to come out on top. There's definitely new ways to monetize. There's vir- I mean, I'm setting up virtual concerts. For, I mean, I, I've got clients to do arena shows. You can now sell arena show style tickets. Okay. When you, 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 I mean, you're talking, you know, 12 to 14,000 tickets for, for an arena show. Uh, and you could sell that from the comfort of a green screen studio or the artist's living room. So the shift, we are forcing the consumer to adapt to a new, a new format of enjoying entertainment better than ever because people have no choice. They can't go to an arena. So it's, it's an opportunity for the artist. Whereas maybe three months ago, if you did a virtual concert, nobody would even buy a ticket because they're going to go next week to the arena and they're going to be sitting, you know, the ninth row and go scream with their friends or at the club or anywhere else entertaining themselves. Yeah. yeah I mean, that applies to any, any, you know, any venue, but it may go back to that, by the way, it may go back to that, but I think yeah. the world, the world has definitely taken an advanced push on accepting new grounds for artists to monetize their talents. Yeah. So look, guys, yeah. you heard it. Pierre Hachar, you want to consume some of his content. You could check some of it out on his Instagram, Red Carpet Law. Pretty dope ass name. Check him out, guys. Pierre. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. I'd appreciate it if you could share, leave a review, and subscribe to the show. Visit hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app for more free resources, event invitations, and online courses to empower your personal and financial success. Learn about marketing, finances, business development, branding, strategic partnerships, and much more. If you're looking to further connect, check me out on Instagram or LinkedIn at Alex Quinn. That's A-L-E-X-Q-U-I-N. See you on the next episode.